everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Wednesday on a beautiful day. Uh, high temps, but a nice breeze. We got about 85 degrees, but a nice breeze, and it's just uh, just beautiful out. So let's get downstairs and knock a project out so we can enjoy some of this beautiful weather. Okay, we're back down the shop, and you know, um, on Sundays, today is actually Monday that I'm filming this, you know, by the time I finish up the projects, I'll get it in the can for Wednesday, but uh, on Sundays, we get a lot of uh, the creators that I follow on YouTube tend to put out a lot of videos on Sunday. So it's a jam-packed day. I got I get a lot of videos in to watch and uh, always enjoyable. And uh, my buddy uh, James, he put out a great video. He went with his family to a World War II reenactment uh over in in ohio and what a great video with all kinds so i'll put a link to that in the description if you can stop by there check that out i think you'll really enjoy it uh oh it looked like such a great time wish i could have been there i mean ohio is about eight hour drive for me and, and it is a, a trip but i think it was worth it was just beautiful so uh thanks for posting that james it was a beautiful video um Today, I just, uh, like I said, we got a few things to do. I, uh, I got a lot of things to do afterwards. So let's knock out a project, a fun project. I have a, you know, I'm kind of teeter-tottering between two items I have here. Let me show okay, you. Okay, first off, I got to start with a quick retraction. I made a mistake last time. We were talking about this, uh, you know, uh, the one I redid on this, uh, this Lyman Skinner's knife. And some of them have a notch in here. And I had said that that's to put your thumb... And my electrician buddies and everything said, oh, you know, it's not for your thumb. Because I've seen pictures of guys with their thumb on this, and I kind of, you know, I don't know. i never seen one. But apparently, the notch in there is sharpened. Obviously, if it's sharpened, you wouldn't use it for your thumb. What that's for is to uh, go around the cable and or to scrape it or things like that. So uh, it's not for your thumb if you see that notch. So I apologize for making that mistake. i never seen one with the notch. If, it was, if I seen it and it was sharp, I would not I would have known. Um, okay, for today's projects. Now, uh, you remember we did this last week, and a lot of people liked it, and it is beautiful, right? These uh, Taiwanese pliers from uh, the Buffalo brand, they, they came out nice. Now, um, what I was kind of running between were these two here, this Crowder and this Bar. A couple people want to see either one of these done. Now, it's funny. Uh, this pair, this is the pair of pliers. I grew up with these pliers. They were my grandfather's or great grandfather's. I don't know. They were always in the house. I used these and beat on these. Uh, I just did a quick going over. They used to be black like these were, but, uh, I did this a few years ago because, you know, it was a tribute to my grandfather. I've used these. I've cut thousands of things with these over the years. These were my first pliers, I guess, that I was given as a kid. So, um, but these here, I just got these. Look at the difference between these. They're both Kreuter. This is an 1830-8. This one here is a 1801-8.5. So you can see it's a little bit, it's a half inch longer. But it's also, look at the width of it. It's it's wider, it seems, right? It seems beefier. And, uh, you know, the angles are a little bit more pronounced. You see there, the facets on there? So uh, it's a whole different pl and that this, you know, this is, has a sharper edge. This one here, not quite as sharp. Very interesting, you know, pliers. I got these cheap again. So I, I but here's the thing. I ordered two pair of Klein coats uh, just recently. I always get a bunch of Klein coats. I love them. And I was going to put one pair on here, but these are too thin. They don't, and I, they would swim, the Klein coats would spin. So I didn't, you know, I wasn't going to do that. But this here is the same thickness as a Klein so I said, maybe if we've never seen a Croydon with a Klein coat, so that would be fun. And also, these advertising bars are so fantastic. Let's see if we can't just go crazy and knock two of these out today, these two. Okay, okay. we'll start off with the Croydon first. You can see here we got some of that bad pitting over here, but the letters look deep enough that we should be able to keep it, except over here is a little bit loose on top, so you got to be careful. Um, other than that, they're in, in nice, you know, shape. They got some rusting and things like that around here, some staining, some dents in here. But the, you see how the the cutters, they close and you can't see light through it, so you know they're going to cut well. And then the handles, maybe we'll slip some Klein coats on there so we don't have to go nuts on them. So uh, let's start with these.
Okay, here we are after just the flap wheel with the with the grinder and you can see we're able to keep all the lettering We just got to go with the belt sander to smooth out some of the rough areas and the corners See it's a little bit sharp here, but you can see we got all the facets nice. It looks good. Don't it look nice? And uh, and we're gonna I'm, I'm excited to see what the Klein codes look on these I've never seen a pair with these, you know, and it should balance them out But uh, that's just with the flap disc now before I try and finish these off, while I got the flap disc out, we'll just uh, knock off some of these. This is an octagon, octagonal, and you can see here uh, what the advertising was on this. It was Crooks, uh, is that a missing P, Coop? Crooks Coop Lumber Association and uh, Crooks, South Dakota. Uh, there was a guy who had a bunch of these on eBay, so and they were all in good shape uh, Different brands, you know different so he must have collected them and I grabbed a couple But first we're gonna hit this with the wire brush because we want to get in the lettering and we also got to get in these crooks here That's always tough to get to so let's do that Okay, here's our post wire brush evaluation now again, we don't do the whole bar but you see how nice just with the wire brush this comes out got all the whatever residual junk was in those letters got them out and uh, We will fill that in with a little scout craft of red uh, later on uh, I got to be careful on this edge because you see that the lettering is a little bit tilted I don't want to really get rid of it, but uh, we just want to clean this bar up I want to show you how useful these are and why you need one now This has a little bit of a flat on here, and I'll show you what that's for later same thing with here you, you know, you want this flat. Um, it's such a useful little bar. You can see what it looks like. You know, we got a little rust over here, but we'll we'll knock all that out. Just remember this is uh, an octagon and you have to, you know, rotate each one and just lightly go over with the flap disc. And I have a worn 60 I'm going to use and that'll give a nice finish on here. That's why I waited to do the rest of the tools so that's nice and worn. Now, this next segment I'm filming in real time. This is real time and how long it takes to do each one of those octagonal facets. And you can see here I take small passes and I use the light reflection to make sure that I'm getting in the middle of that facet, that I'm not curving it over. So I'm just, I have my head directly over it and I'm looking up and down to see the light and where I'm touching on that bar. Uh, next, I'll take the back of it and I'll just follow that line, that the, the two lines on each edge up, and then, I'll, as you know, I do every other octagonal facet to get it finished. Now, when we're doing the uh, surface with the lettering in it, these letters are stamped nice and deep, which is what we love. But still, we're doing a circular motion and going over it lightly, making sure to do a little bit less pressure on the lettering area so that we keep them nice and crisp. Okay, here we are. This is just with the flap disc here. And you can see it, it's coming out nice. Now we have to smooth and blend everything. We'll do that with the fiber wheel. But I'm very happy with the way it's come out. Now, just a, a tip about the flap disc. This is what a worn flap disc looks like. You'll start to see a curve. First of all, it gets a lot, it, you know, it, it's down about a quarter of an inch on each side or whatever. So it shrinks in size as it's wearing. This is what a brand new flap disc looks like, you could see. And this is where you're touching, mostly from here to here. So, you know, this part here is, you know, still pretty... Um, it has a lot of abrasive on it, but this here you can feel it's very smooth, you know And that's why a worn flap disc. This is a 80 grit. You can see here. It says 80 grit This worn flap disc will behave like a 120 grit because it's all worn But if you take this this will give you a lot of scratches That's why for certain things I wait a while to, and use these worn discs to uh, you know to get a finish Whereas if you use a sh if I was to use this disc it would leave a ton of, of sharp lines in there so let's get finished up. Let's go to the uh, belt sander and uh, smooth all these things. Now, one nice feature about the belt sander is it softens the feel of the tool. It, it takes away the sharp edges and it makes it so nice to handle and touch. Okay, and here we go. A couple pair of nice Klein coats. One of Klein's best products that they make. And uh, <clears throat> we've done these before on the channel. We're going to put these on here. We have the finished, 
the the Croydus, the uh, 1801. You see that? It looks real nice. I'll show you when we're finished. But everything's clean now. I even did the handles because they do show through the Klein coat. So you want them nice and cleaned up. Everything's been waxed and polished. So uh, let's put these on. We have to dip these in hot water and using a rubber mallet, bang them on. I'll now show you. The first thing we would do is take a can, fill it with hot, hot tap water, and place these with the open end in the hot tap water with about an inch sticking out of the water because this you want to remain hard and this you want to get flexible. So super hot tap water, and it's got to stay in there for about. Okay, a minute. now what we're going to do is we're going to take the the uh, Klein coat out of the hot water. Whip any excess water that might be in there, place it over here like this, and line it up. You can see it's lined up with the grips on the outside. I like to place it on my piece of wood and a vise, and here's where the rubber hammer comes in real handy. Just tap it down like this until it seats, and just keep tapping it. When it's halfway down, make sure it's still going on straight. You can always turn it a little bit when it's halfway down, but just bang it on until it seats all the way down. And when it's all the way seated, you'll see it's lined up nice here. See that? And oh, that's just beautiful. Now we'll do the other side the same exact way. Now you know my favorite part. Remember what these two tools look like before we started. And we're calling this project done. Look how beautiful these came out, huh? Let's uh, take a look at them. Let's start one at a time. Let's start off with the Croydon. Now here we have these beautiful Croydon pliers. You could see here how nicely they came out. Now a couple people are wondering why I leave the grain. There's a certain grain to it. Why I leave that? Because it don't show fingerprints. If you mirror polish this, which I used to do, every time you touch it, it has a fingerprint. It looks horrible. These you could grab all day long. No fingerprints. And of course it waxed and everything's nice. Look at all the facets came out beautiful. These were just a beautiful, and look at those Klein coats. This first time I've ever seen Croiders with a, a pair of Klein coats on them, and it's just, it's so balanced because this head is so big and beefy and wide. You need, you can't have thin handles, you know, it'll look out of place, so to speak, but doesn't that look balanced and, and just pretty? And, uh, and they do work good. Let me show you how they work. I have the, uh, you know, telltale zip tie, and you can see here we get the, uh, clips it's shooting it across the uh the shop so to speak on you know it's again these are untouched uh so i didn't want to touch them because they were original look at you have the original can you see that let me just get in here you can see the original mill marks you see that there the original markings of you see that how that's nice in there kept everything in the milling marks inside of here and the the, the jaws are so nice this was they were very uh, very little use on these a little bit of uh, oil coming out of the uh out of the ring at it but uh isn't that nice just a beautiful pair let's take a look at now the here we did the uh the mini cro these are so great you have to pick one of these up uh, these are just super handy and they're so cute and they're just fun to play with and let's see what we did here. We, we did it up obviously, you know, the way we like to do it. Put a little red in there to really highlight the, the letters. You could see now it does say it and, uh, you know, wax the bar and everything and it feels so nice in the hands and polish this out and let me show you how this works and you can see here you can use this as a regular to get on the nails using your soft blow hammer you could whack that to get under the nail but uh also you have this little flat here that can act two ways one is a makeshift hammer and the other you know a light duty hammer obviously and also to protect when you wanted to hammer this uh claw into or under something also i put a flat on the top of here you see that little flat on top and that's because if you wanted to bang this again with a soft blow hammer and wedge yourself under a piece of wood you know so there's so many ways you could use this and that's why i have those those uh, pronounced flats on top and i only use a soft blow hammer so it'll always look good and you could see here you know the, the facets on here but they're smoothed out now so when it's in your hand you don't feel any sharpness whatsoever the only two slightly sharp points are the corners here and i even took them down a little bit but 
Isn't that just a, a beauty? And these were giveaways. There was thousands of these given away, mostly in the Midwest and things like that. I used to see a lot of tractor dealers and farm dealers and things like that. And, and of course, this lumber company. So, But, you know, on the East Coast, I don't think they gave away as much cool stuff like this. So Now, in case you're thinking these weren't the real deal and they were cheaply made because they were giveaways, that's not the case. Look at, listen to their tone. There we have these two pro projects and what wonderful projects they were today. Okay, so in closing, uh, we have these two, one of the uh, Croyder pliers and the nice uh, pry bar, the advertising crowbar pry bar. Fantastic little projects, a lot of fun today, came out really nice. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you have a great rest of the week and we'll see you again on Friday. Don't forget, check out James's video in the link. Take care now, bye-bye. <laughs>